Hello and welcome back to A World Without with me, Chris. And me, Jack. This is the podcast where we get into the hypothetical and discuss what we think would happen if something from our everyday lives suddenly stopped existing tomorrow. Yep, and today we're taking a look at what life might be like in a world without questions. Alright, so... I was originally going to say that this is the first podcast we should try and adhere to whilst actually recording, right? But there's a couple of problems with it. Okay. Do you know what they are? Um, We're already asking a question, what would the world be like without questions? So we've already failed? Pretty much, yeah. It's surprisingly going to be hard to to not ask questions, especially when we're having a debate together. Um, Mm. So that was point one. Point two is I also don't remember seeing any bananas hanging around when we were filming... A world without fruit. Uh, so we've already True. we've already adhered to one. Done it. And open flames. Nope. None of them. Uh, neither of us died that I remember. True. If anything, this is going to be the first one we didn't do it. Chairs. We, <laughs> chairs. We we were sitting down. Clothes. Luckily, luckily, we d- it's literally it's literally that fruit fire, bread, moon, death. They're the only ones so far that we haven't technically that we have a technically adhered to okay you sure mm-hmm. i went through i'm not going to check you on that but i'm just going to accept that you're right so yes uh good but this one too difficult i reckon way too difficult i would say instead let's make a game where people at home can count how many times we ask questions oh i wonder how many that's gonna be i don't know i uh, hang on i can't ask i was trying to ask a question but i couldn't remember how questions worked is it going to be more than two is it going to be more than Five. <laughs> this could go. This is going to be a long podcast. Anyway, shall we move on? <laughs> you know, I don't see this one affecting the world in like a catastrophic way. I do feel this one's more of just like a social issue, bit of an inconvenience. Yeah, like I feel. I feel like it's just got a bit of an adjustment period in the way we talk. I think it's a, a relatively short term problem. I, I don't think this is going to be one that completely changes the way we live. It's just going to be we have to kind of change the way we talk a bit. Just rephrase everything slightly and you're good. I think anyone who grows up in a post-question world wouldn't struggle. Kids 10 years time from now, they'll be like, what? Why would I ask a question? Oh, that's a question. Oh, oh. (laughs) Oh, uh, They wouldn't say that. They would say, I don't ask questions. I don't even know what a question is. That was hard. I almost said, what is a question again? This is harder than I thought. You were born pre-question removal, Jack. I was Jack. born it's pre-question. Fine. Uh, they're they're, they're going to be laughing at us. They're going to be there struggling to string sentences together. Idiots. Where were you when the questions... No, they can't ask that they either. They can't ask that, Chris. Come you, on. You were somewhere where the, when the question ended. <laughs> it, like, they're just going to be laughing at us constantly because we're going to be doing that all the time. Just tripping over our words. Be like, oh, no, that would have been a question. Can't say that. At least they can't be like, um, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Or... That's true. Uh, you know, why? Kids are quite annoying with that, aren't they? They love asking pointless questions all the time. It's almost like they want to learn more about the world or something. Stupid kids. I know. It's like they have a <laughs> thirst for knowledge or something, idiots. Just shut up, all right? <laughs> Stop trying to learn things. Just go and play with your crayons and shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think basically things just have to become more like fact, more statements, right? You just kind of have yeah. to be like... You packed my lunch. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, you basically just have to more make a statement and then they answer with either like, what? No. Or like, yeah. You can't ask what? Like, oh, sorry. Because like you could you could just walk up to someone and go, your name is John. And they'd be like, no, it's Lucy. Go, okay, great. I know your name now. <laughs> wow, that was quite a bad guess. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible guess. <laughs> really bad guess. Like, just way off. But that's the point. You don't even need to really have to try and guess. Just you need to get across the idea. I basically want to know what your name is, but I can't ask. Exactly. So your, your name's John. No, it's Lucy. Great. Know your name. Now we've got past all of that. Easy. And I, th- I think that's quite nice, isn't it? The fact that you, people are going to be prepared to be wrong a lot more, which I think we all yeah. need a bit of a bit of a bit of a reality check here, people. Yeah. Come on, like we're all wrong most of the time, aren't we? Come most on. The, I mean, I'm not, but I've, most people are. Well, yeah, all I the thought time. you might say that, but sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, I think it just streamlines some of like social interaction. You know, when you when you meet up with a friend, you're like, "Hi there, I'm doing well," and they go, "Hi." I'm also doing well. You're like, great, I would like a drink. You know, you don't have to do like, how are you? Would you like a drink? What you've been up to? You just, you preemptively do it. You exactly. just jump straight in there. Streamlines everything. It's great. It does make us sound a little bit more robotic. 
does. I, I just think generally it gets rid of small talk. And honestly, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, small talk can, can do one, as far as yeah, I'm concerned. I don't like it. I really don't like it. It's, just, oh, it's pointless, isn't it? No, I don't care what you've been up to at the weekend. You know, now I don't have to ask. You can be like, would love to know what you've been up to at the weekend. Unfortunately, can't ask. I'm going to go back to my, my desk now. See you later, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Let, let, get rid of small talk. Just more of the big talk, folks. Come on. Yeah. Although, we can't really do the big talk. If, you, if, if we're honest, you can't ask, what's the meaning of life? You know, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? You know, is water wet? All the big questions. You, you can't ask them anymore. So it, it works on the big and the small scale. Medium talk? <laughs> is that okay. all we've got left? But in terms of turning everything to statements, apparently that's already kind of a thing in Spanish. Now, I didn't really verify this information as per. Um, so if you do speak Spanish, please let me know if I'm right or wrong here. But apparently in Spanish, there is no difference between a yes, no question and a statement. What do you mean? I don't really know. <laughs> but apparently, if you were like, are you 26? Right. If you were to ask that as a question in English, they would have a yes, no answer. Apparently, that's the same as just saying you are 26. Kind oh. of what we we're talking about before. So it's kind of like more of a true or false question. You're kind of more just saying like, you're 26. True or false, and and they're just answer. Yeah, like like we're doing the thing. Your name's John. No, no, I'm not. Like you're twenty six. I d again, I'm not one hundred percent sure if that is correct, but apparently I read it in one place. You know, you know what I like about the Spanish, Paya. Uh, no, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was going to bring that up next. You kind of ruined my point, but um, no, I I, I like the fact that they preemptively put an upside down question mark at the beginning of a question so you know a question's coming already know what you're in for yeah it's so clever why why put it at the end put all the punctuation at the beginning preload us with this knowledge how do you do that in terms of speech like you know we have an upload inflection on the end when we have a question do they have it at the start they're like why is that, <laughs> <laughs> that they, I they, think start... they might do is that a thing or do you because have a downwards like... inflection what are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you sound like a kid's car cartoon character. <laughs> it's really hard to do, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it sounds it. I could see the pain in your face. It does make wedding proposals a little bit more demandy, you know? You will marry me, Sandra. You will. Take this man. Take this woman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. If if you if you say so, sir. <laughs> Did you pop the big demand last last weekend? Marry me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit more creepy, isn't it? Just getting it's down on one knee. Creepier. Marry me. But then, see, everyone's going to come to expect it, right? So yes, you know, take some of the romance out, doesn't it? Exactly. It's not as romantic, is it? Oh. Hmm. So going back to saying that this might make people a bit more honest or forthcoming about mm -hmm. what they want, at least, I think that's really true. Like, imagine like a, a boardroom and they're all having a meeting about some kind of product development or something. Normally now people would be like, oh, um, do you think maybe just maybe we should possibly have slightly less curves on the product, perhaps? Whereas now they're just going to be like, I think it should have less curves, just straight out. You have to be more direct. You have to make us, everything has to be a statement. You can't be like, I think we should do this. It's just like, we're doing this. Yeah. Guys. And again, be prepared to be shut down in a ball of flames. But yeah. hey, at least you put yourself out there, mate. Maybe does cause more arguments, though. It's just like, I think we should do this. I think we should do this. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. You have to be oh, yeah. a bit more rude, isn't it? It is a bit more rude. But uh, honesty and rudeness... They kind of have a weird relationship. <laughs> a they little do. bit. Like there's there's a very fine line between being honest and being rude and being Exactly. Blunt, if you were just you know walking I mean? down the street and you just saw someone and you were like, You're fat, that's rude. Yeah. Right? I can't think of an example that's just honest and not rude. Well if someone said, Um, do you reckon I put on a bit of weight? And you're like, maybe a bit. <laughs> like, you well, know, you could say it in a nicer tone, but look, they're asking. They obviously want to know. And you, you just... wonder why you're single. <laughs> <laughs> look, in my mind, don't ask the question if you don't want the answer. <laughs> look, if you're scared of being told yes, don't ask, mate. Otherwise, why ask me any question? If you just want to hear what you want 
the here. Like, this is getting into a whole other thing. I feel like I'm having a rant with an ex here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the direct conversation I've had with people before. <laughs> don't ask a question you don't want the answer to, is all I'm saying. If anything, though, I think it might make people start like pre-answering questions that haven't even been asked yet. Well, that's kind of what I was saying with like the social greetings. You come in and you're just like, hi, yeah. I'm doing well. Good, I'm also doing well. I want a drink. You know, like you just have to... You know, <laughs> well, that turned quite quickly, didn't it? <laughs> well, because they, they would be like, oh, come in, hi, do you want a drink? You know, you know they're going right. to ask you that. So you're just like, uh, I, w- I would like a drink, yeah. I'm, I'm going to preemptively presume you're going to offer me a drink, so I'm just going to ask for one. It's easy. Exactly. It's going to make us more considerate about each other's feelings and needs and what people want and stuff, which I think is good for the most part, you know? Maybe. Let's get into other people's minds. You know, it's a bit of a scary place, but... You might you might find that you're you're doing something for someone before they even realise they wanted something. I, it's just going to be lovely. What a lovely place this is going to be. That is, that's that's a very positive way of looking at it, Chris. Yeah, yeah. thank and you I, very much. That person might want something, but they couldn't possibly ask for it. So I'm going to have to assume they want it. So I'm going to have to just go and do it anyway. So you go over and you say, you look fat, mate. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask me, do I look fat? So I've just gone, gone straight ahead there and just answered that question. So considerate. So I hope you don't mind. Yes, you've put on some weight, mate. <laughs> I do think dating might be quite tough, though. Getting to know someone, you know, without... Tougher. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough as it is, but definitely tougher. Like, because getting to know someone without being able to ask them questions about themselves. So, like, similar to kind of what you said, I think we would all have to come a bit more... I'm, I'm viewing this in a much more negative way than you. I think we'd all have to become a bit more selfish. We just have to talk about ourselves a lot more. You'd have to be like... Sit down and just like start reeling off your life story. Because you're like, well, you can't ask me anything, so I'm just going to tell you all about myself. So you don't have to ask. So I think people who like talking about themselves would actually probably do quite well out of this. Yeah, they barely ask questions as it is. I know. They're basically living in this world already. They're just like, I'm just going to talk about me. So they basically have practice with this. I'm, t- I'm talking about myself here, really. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to say anything, but, you know, <laughs> glad one of us said it. <laughs> what are quiz shows going to do now? I know. That was their bread and butter. Daytime TV has suddenly just gone to pot, eh? Yeah, I mean, I did think um, the American uh, TV show Jeopardy had the right idea because they're given the answer, oh. but it's still broken because they have to give the question back. Mm. That's how that works. So I thought I thought they'd found a loophole. I was just about to say they're way ahead of their time, but... No. Yeah. Same problems. Same problems. That is the same problem. It's just going to have to be less quiz shows and more game shows, more like physical-based right, yeah. thing. Like, bring back Slime Pits. You remember Slime Pits? Yeah, like Total Wipeout, things like that. Oh. You doing obstacle courses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I want to see people fall in, you know, head over heels and into a big barrel of green goo. That's my kind of entertainment. Great, great stuff. Get rid of all yeah. this questions and trivia and knowledge and mm. stuff. like We don't need that. So I, although I do love a pub quiz. Love a pub quiz. What's your favourite thing about trivia? a pub quiz? Uh, the questions... Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just taking part in a quiz is, is mainly what I'm there for. Fair um, enough. Even in this lockdown, I've been making quizzes. Like, we've been running a virtual pub quiz. Like, I love a quiz. Can't get enough of it. Even when you get rid of the pub, I still do the quiz. So the pub really isn't the aspect of it. It's it's definitely the quiz I'm into. See, for me, it's, it, I think it's more of the pub part I quite like. Like, I like I like some peanuts. Right, but you can go to a pub anytime, you know? Well, I can, yeah. But then at a pub, you have to, like, what, talk to people? Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, no. Get rid of all the talking. I just want to sit down and do a test. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, what about school tests? How do they work now? You can't ask uh, all your the maths questions and, you know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. How do we prove that people have learned something? I know. By, if we can't ask them, did, did you learn this, please? Mm. Like a more practical test? It, it, t- total wipeout again. Is that what we're doing? Just obstacle courses for kids to work out? There we go. Maths? There we go. <laughs> yes. smash, smash through the door that's the right answer. If it's got a two on it and you've got a four on it, you have to smash through the one that's the correct one. Okay, but what, what's the qu- what question are they being asked anyway? Oh, uh, yeah. How do you ask a question? You don't. You can't. Just uh, take it. Take Just... it, I guess. <laughs> Two or four? What do you mean? That's what do you mean? Question, Two though. or four? <laughs> Pick a door, child. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole testing thing goes well out the window. So I don't know how we work out who's smart anymore. Um. Yeah. I mean, do we need to know who's smart and that anymore? People are going to tell you if they're smart or not. 
you know. Oh, but that's not that's not a true arbiter of intelligence. If someone just tells you they're intelligent, that's uh, mm, no. That's what needs to happen though. People need to walk into a room and state four interesting, knowledgeable facts that they know. Right. And then then you can kind of gauge their intelligence level. You know. Okay. Okay. Because intelligence comes in lots of different forms. So it does. So I mean, maybe getting rid of tests is a good thing. You know, some people aren't aren't good at the tests, but it doesn't mean they're stupid. They're just not academic types. So maybe, maybe we this levels the playing field a bit more. When you say level the playing field, do you mean this one with all the doors on that the kids yeah. have got to run yeah. run through and stuff and the slide? Actually, levelling of it makes it way too easy. It needs to be like really heavy incline. Actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> job interviews as well, though. I hate a job interview, though. Well, they're going to be even harder when you don't know what they want to know. Oh, true. You just have to start going in and just being like, I can, I can do Excel. Um, and I can file. Yeah, how daunting would that be? You just walk in, they just don't say anything. You just sit down and they're just like, <laughs> begin. <laughs> and you just have to reel off, like, why you should be employed. Like, it just has to be assumed that you are there. Im- impress me. That's that's just all they say. Yeah. They just sit down and go, impress me. Impress me. <laughs> and you just keep talking. And then at some point in the interview, they point to the door really menacingly. <laughs> You're like, okay, okay. You'll, you'll be in touch? Oh, that's a question. Can't say yeah, that. That's a question. Like, um, I look forward to your call. <laughs> and then you but, just edge backwards out. But I mean, what really is the difference between a statement and a question? If you say, what is your biggest weakness, which is a question, and tell me your biggest weakness, that, that second one feels more like a statement than a question, right? But it's I mean, the same yeah, there's thing. no question mark at the end, right? So, so it's, I feel like that's a big way we can just loophole this whole thing. Just turn everything into that kind of thing. Like, not how was your weekend? Tell me how your weekend was. How does it work in our brain, though? Can we think questions in our own brain? Or is even that, like, off limits? Oh, because I think we'd all turn into, like, mush if we couldn't comprehend, like, think of a question. Like, we just wouldn't be able to exist in the world. I feel like we're constantly asking ourselves questions. Right, so in this a world without, it's more just like there's a really strict ban on saying questions out loud. But you can think them. I was quite interested in like the dynamics of this one. I normally don't want to delve too much into it. But like, do previous questions get censored if you're watching an old film that has a question in it? Just that that bit of the film just completely disappear randomly? Or could you like, in theory, edit a question together at a previously recorded stuff? Yeah, like, could we just go around with like a little pre-recorded recorder just asking questions? Just find out a recording from an old film or something of every question you want to know and just have it on a little dictaphone. You've turned us into Bumblebee from Transformers is what you've done. <gasps> yes. Speaking through our voice thing. That's basically what we are. We just find a little recording of the question we want to ask and then we just play that out and then they just <laughs> they can then just answer. Perfect. Can you not just not ask it as a qu- like do you want a sandwich is a question but can you say that as a statement without questioning it? Tell me if you would like a sandwich. That is a statement not a question, right? Yeah. It's a weird line, isn't it? Because I was reading into, like, indirect questions. There's basically, you can be like, oh, she wanted to know where the, where the, I don't know, cushion is. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I couldn't think of a thing that anyone would want to know. Uh, that was weird. <laughs> My Cushions, brain just yeah. fell apart. <laughs> Maybe I've stopped being able to think of questions already. It's already happened. The has begun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, she wants to know where the report is, right? That is me relaying the fact that she asked the question, but that is not me directly asking the question. Apparently there's like a fine line. Me saying a statement of, oh, she wanted to know where the thing... I'm I'm not phrasing that as a question, even though it has a question in it. So is that allowed? You're getting into real like passive aggressive stuff now, you know? That or I don't know. This is going to really cause some arguments, I think. Yeah, Um, I I don't know whether that's allowed (laughs) or not. I really don't. I mean, because technically all a question is is a sentence that elicits some kind of response. You're kind of asking for some kind of answer in some form, right? So but I feel like you... surely it is more complicated than that because the whole tell me if you would like this or tell me about yourself, I feel like that's more of a statement than a question. Tell me about yourself? <laughs> yeah, because it's certainly not a question. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird fine line. And yeah. I genuinely think we're not the guys to figure oh, this yeah, one we, out. Oh, yeah, we're not linguists. <laughs> we have no idea what we're talking about. I, d- I do think Australians and Kiwis might struggle because they kind of have that upwards inflection. Ooh, they're basically asking questions all the time. I know. They're just like, oh, good day, mate. Mate, goes, goes up. Was that a question or are you just a statement? So maybe maybe they just can't talk at all. 
We're just going to have a load of really sad sounding Australian people now. Oh, good aim, mate. Good aim, mate. Good aim, mate. <laughs> it doesn't sound right, does it? It doesn't work. Oh, good aim, mate. No, it's, oh, good it's aim, mate. kind of sad. You've got, you got to go oh, up. Australia. And that's like my favourite accent. So they won't even be able to say anything anymore because everything they've got is a, is a question. The whole oh. accent just disappears. So sorry, Australians and Kiwis. You've sort of been really screwed over it, haven't you? <laughs> A little bit of good news. It does free up the question mark. Oh, you reckon we still have the question mark? You still reckon that's knocking about? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a symbol. It just needs to, it can just mean something else now, you know? Um, Interesting. So I did start trying to have a little look around at what other kind of punctuation marks we were missing. But there's there's loads of really unused ones that have taken up all the slots already. So hit me. I've got some examples here. I'm, I'm going to give you the, uh, the, the type of... Uh, punctuation it is and I want you to give me a really quick example of it being used okay oh god so uh, an interrobang which is hilarious um, it's, oh do you know this one yeah that's the question mark and an exclamation mark that's, together that's it give us an example he did what literally the example I thought of um, perfect uh, the irony mark oh I have no idea what that is well it denotes ir- or ironicness but I don't know how you denote that like I don't know what the symbol is neither do I but I can't remember what it looks like but Give us an example. How do... How, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you don't know what the irony marks looks like? Well, then how am I... I've not got... I mean, it's a podcast. I can't show people what it's, it's written like. Yeah, but you could, you could d- describe it. <sighs> One second. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get, get prepared here, Chris. All right, so the irony mark, basically, you flip a question mark backwards. So it's like the, the squiggle goes the other way. Oh, so it's like an Arabic question mark. Yeah. They have that in Arabic, right? I guess so. I guess so. And yeah, that denotes something being ironic, obviously. Oh. Uh, it's like rain on your wedding day. It's like free advice when you've already paid. It's like... Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the real irony one there. Um, yeah. The snark mark. It's um, a full stop with like a squiggly sideways line. A tilde. Tilde, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Ooh. A snark mark. You should be good at this, mate. Um, I, I'm suddenly struggling to think of anything snarky to say <laughs> at all. <laughs> oh, great point, Chris. Is that snarky? I mean... Sarcastic. Anything coming from you has a little bit yeah. of it. Well, we'll get onto yeah, that in so. a little bit. Um, a rhetorical question is also, weirdly, a backwards question mark. So I don't really understand. So there's no difference between that and the... What was it before? The irony mark. I don't know. Like The irony mark's got a bit more of a squiggle to it. It's very, very fine differences here, but it's right. basically a backwards question mark. So yeah, give us a rhetorical. Oh, God. Um, I would love to know why we're doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nobody can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to answer, luckily. <laughs> um, the next one, the love point, which is kind of like two question marks forming a heart. One's backwards, one's flipped oh, around. Adorable. So what, is this just to denote love? It's basically just, yeah, just something lovely. Hit me with some love. Oh, this is this is the hardest one. Um, you're all right, aren't you, Chris? <laughs> wow, that's as much we could squeeze from you. That's yeah, that's impressive. There's the there's the like final uh, finality point. I don't really know what its proper name is. It's an exclamation mark with a little line through the top bit. Oh, um, and that's basically like uh, you know, I am leaving, and that's that kind of thing. Right. So, uh, did you want me to give you an example? Yes, please. I'm leaving, and that's that. Well done. The doubt point as well, which is, oh. I mean, this is why I didn't write them down or anything, because they're so confusing. It's like you started drawing the number three in a very curly calligraphy font yeah. and then kind of gave up two thirds of the way through and then put a dot oh. on. Uh, and that's to denote doubt. To presume. denote doubt, yes. I'm not sure we should go this way, Johnny. Why was it American? Because <laughs> I, I just imagined we're in like a, a sort of teen horror film. Interesting how your mind works. Very interesting. I just felt I just felt us walking through a woods uh, and it's dark. And then Johnny's like, oh, I, th- I think it's through here. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm Kate. And uh, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a whole story about this one. Uh, I'm like, I'm not sure we should go through there, Johnny, because I feel like we're going to get killed. And we are. We're about to get killed. Uh, OK, and then you can reply as Johnny here with the last one, which is a sark mark, which is a bit like the the at symbol. But instead of the A in the middle, there's a dot in the middle. No, is this sarcastic? Is that, oh, you would say that. That's not sarcastic. That's that's more of a snarky one. I, a little, I've done a little snark, bit. snark yeah. and sark. You know. Oh, great suggestion, Katie. 
<laughs> Man, we need more of this teen American drama here. Please. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll work on the script. Uh, we can we can do a little run through of it at some point. Yeah, but anyway, so all of those things are taken, and I genuinely couldn't think of another type of thing that needed a, a a piece of punctuation for it. Other than the only idea I had was maybe like whispered shouting. Oh, well, like, you're like really angry with someone, but you've got to stay quiet. It's like, if I had to tell you one more goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that, right? There's no way to denote that because you can't put an exclamation mark because it's quiet. But at the same time... Maybe it's like a tilde before an exclamation mark. It's like, I'm angry, but, but like, ooh, ooh, not not quite. There's keep little, it low. <laughs> a little bit of wibble before the angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. That could work. We made one. I did also think as well you could go down the emoticon route, right? Not the emoji route. I I had to look this up, the difference between an emoji and an emoticon. The emoticon being like made of characters. So like a colon and a curly bracket right. is a smiley face in emoticon, whereas an emoji is an image of a cartoon yeah. cartoon thing. So I was thinking, yeah, p- p- picture a question mark right now. And these are some of the emoticon ideas I had for it. I narrowed it down to these finalists. You can rate them for me or whatever. So right, right, p- p- picture in a question mark. Mm-hmm. Yep, got one. I've gone fishing. Yeah, that works. It's a hook. It's a, a hook. hook. Um, I bent my snooker cue. <laughs> you know, you know how you always say in conversation, <laughs> you know? Just it's, it's, a, it's really needed a lot to be its own emoticon. Depends if you're a snooker player or not, I don't know, and how vigorously you, you cue And it. how bendy they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a simple, a pirate thumbs up. Why a pirate? Because it's a hook. Right. Didn't get that. Completely missed the joke there. Very clever. My favourite one is probably um, my snake's head fell off. Oh, that's that's dark. Again, very niche. Very niche. Very niche. I couldn't think of anything better. I did try for a seriously long amount of time. They were the best I came up with. But how do you know if they're ta- saying my snake's head fell off, I'm gone fishing, I'm a pirate, or all of the above? I think it's just got to be context, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can't come tonight. Put a question mark. Are you saying they've gone fishing? Are you saying my snake's head fell off? I don't think that's that's easy to denote through context. I guess you can't ask questions either, so it doesn't matter, can't does even it? Find out. <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck. Given the the question mark back, and you're a pirate, giving them a thumbs up to say that's all right, mate. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Hey, language is sorted. <laughs> Just constantly talking in question marks to each other. <laughs> I feel like lots of films are ruined now. You know, some famous quotes. You've got Taxi Driver. You're looking at me? You're looking at me? And No? You've got to be like, I'm presuming you're looking at me. But it's not, <laughs> not quite the same, is it? You feel lucky? Well, do you? Punk? Dirty Harry? No? It's like... You lucky punk. You're such a lucky punk, you are. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Nope. Uh, Going to find out who framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> dude, where's my car? Uh, oh. Dude, I've lost my car. That still kind of works. That still kind of works. Um... Some other quotes as well. Seven. What's in the box? What's in the box? You're going to tell me what's in the box. You're going to tell me what's in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Not, quite well, Not as it? catchy. Um, Dark Knight. Why so serious? You're serious. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> he just becomes a bit of a fed up. Oh, you're serious, right? Uh, yeah, it kind of ruins a lot of them. So does. that's a shame. A lot, a lot of films ruined there. You, you also got um, the Saw films. Do you want to play a game? It's just now. This is the game you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the other one I thought of? Oh, Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? And now it just has to be call us. Ghostbusters. Yeah, great. Yeah, it, it does really ruin the flow of a lot of it classic really films and stuff. So, what about Google? You know, it's how I get pretty much all of my knowledge, you know, asking questions to Google all the time. Suddenly can't do that. You know, searching into a toolbar is basically asking a question, isn't it? I guess it is, though. Are you really phrasing them like questions? Well, see, I feel like I do a lot, like, what's the capital, blah, 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 or something like that. But you could just write capital of, you know, You probably should Kazakhstan. write capital of, yeah, Kazakhstan or whatever instead, It's just right? easier, isn't it? It's just easier. Google doesn't know. But, like... It feels like that's still a question. It's just like you're not fully forming the... Because I feel like Google is reading that as what is the capital of. Yeah, I think I think you're right. So does that mean that that part of Google doesn't work? I, I do feel like a lot of what I'm searching are questions, basically. Even if they're kind of formed a little bit rudely, a little bit abruptly yeah, to the it's computer. it's just you being... Like, if you were actually talking to a person, you would phrase the thing you are trying to find out as a question. 
if I was like to try and find out from you what the capital of Kazakhstan was, first I don't know why I'd be coming to you. You have no <laughs> idea. Uh, but secondly, I wouldn't go capital of Kazakhstan. I'd go, Chris, what's the capital of Kazakhstan? And both responses, I would say, uh, is it Astana? I mean, you're still asking questions that I don't know the answers to. <laughs> So would you have to put that into, you'd have to guess, you'd have to say like, banana is the capital of Kazakhstan. And then Google would say, no, no. You are incorrect. It's it's whatever the thing you just said it was a minute ago. <laughs> Weirdly, Ask Jeeves is still around. Did you know that? I mean, I... it's not Ask Jeeves anymore. Is it just it's Jeeves? It's Ask.com. Oh, Ask.com. They got rid of Jeeves. They fired Jeeves. They got, the, Jeeves got, I think he retired. Maybe died even. It's been a quite a while, to be fair. He Maybe he was old. part of some kind of scandal. <laughs> mm. That wouldn't yeah. surprise me, old Jeeves. Yeah, he, he did seem a bit... Ugh. He was that sort, wasn't he? <laughs> a bit sketchy. <laughs> Never did trust old Jeeves. Yeah, I mean, he had that moustache and that... You know, mm. what was under his cloche on his... And his th- he had a exactly. tray, didn't he, with a thing on it? Nobody knows. I don't want to find out, I'd honestly. But it's it's weird to me that that still exists. So like, can you imagine working for Arse.com? Just you go to work every day, we're like, what's the point? I'm surprised they haven't just like hijacked Google search and just put a skin on it on the outside. You know, they, they basically probably have because they only <laughs> they only uh, make up zero point four two percent of all search traffic. That's that's depressing, isn't it? That is pretty depressing, yeah. Which does though mean. That if we have a thousand people listening to this podcast, five of you out there are still using ask.com. <laughs> I mean, really, guys? They haven't Those even got five Jeeves of you. Anymore. What are you doing? Come on, come on. Sort it out. If you do use ask, firstly, why? Secondly, let us know you are so we can ridicule you. I, I think them putting. I'm glad they got rid of Jeeves actually thinking about it because it makes it more personal. I don't think you want to be asking your questions, your, your very personal questions, to a person, do you? You want to kind of have that robotic. What's interface. this rash, Jeeves? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't want Jeeves knowing about a rash. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what who's Jeeves is going to tell? He, he's got a big old gob on him. He could tell mm. all sorts. So good. Ask.com instead. But that does definitely imply that they want you to ask them questions. Yeah. Did you know 15% of searches on Google have never been searched before? Oh, there's a name for that, isn't there? Every day. There's like a whole game about it to try and find like a Google... I can't remember what it was called now. You used to be able to submit them to some website if you found a search result. That's a lot higher than I'd have expected. That is pretty 15% high. 15% every day have never been searched before. That's, that's way higher than I'd have thought. That is much higher than I thought. It's all these rashes people have got. I mean... Mm, very specific about them. <laughs> Do you reckon it's just a lot of people making typos? Oh, probably, yeah. What's this brash on my leg? Does this mean invention has stopped? Because isn't invention, and j- just science, I guess, in general, asking questions, metaphysical questions about the world in the hope of a response of some kind? You you need a um, hypothesis for a, for an experiment, right? No, but a hypothesis isn't a question. That's a statement, right? I think this thing is going to happen. Hmm. Then doing the thing, did that thing happen? Which is a question. So, so we could but, we could start the science, but we can't finish the science. We can't ever find out. <laughs> <laughs> we can never we can never say what we found out. Brilliant. Okay. Well, that's that's useful. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Because along those lines as well, like getting into more like the you know stretching it a bit, like what areas does it affect? Like coding as well. Like is coding, in a sense, asking a question of a computer? Like. Is is this thing this? Yes or no? If it is this, do this. If it is not, do that. Or is it a statement? Is it saying, this thing is this, true or false? This thing is this, true or false? I think you've asked the wrong person again. Um... Right. Because <laughs> I, I feel like it can be both. I do feel like, obviously, computers definitely work much more in statements than they do, like, questions. Yeah, they're very they're very much binary, aren't they, stuff? It's based all on that at, the, at its, it's like, heart. yes or no. But I feel like... Is it just not asking a series of yes or no questions or is it asking a series of true or false statements? Isn't that like saying, does a light bulb ask the wire that it's connected to if it's receiving electricity to go on? Is it? Isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't think it is. But I do think if you do a search on your computer to try and find a file, you're basically saying, is there anything on my computer called this? That is basically what you're doing, right? right? That is a question. Even though you haven't asked, 
what like it sort of goes back to our search toolbar thing like yeah you've not asked a specific question is there a file on my computer called this but by putting it into your search thing that is effectively what you're doing you're asking for a response of some kind which yeah. thus means you were asking a question yeah and computers can't do what humans a computer can't just look at you and go you want to look up fridges don't you you know, it yeah. can't just make a i mean guess. not yet at least not yet oh, we'll, we'll no. get there <laughs> we'll have to if questions are gone <laughs> well, I mean... exactly maybe this will advance ai in some kind of way <laughs> <laughs> it just like you know face scan you just like hmm i'm gonna detect you want this <laughs> <laughs> we have ordered you a fridge it will be arriving <laughs> like, oh, in three to five days great no Star i was drunk. hungry <laughs> there's another fridge coming make room <laughs> No, I was just hungry. I didn't want. I want to know what's in my fridge. I don't want a new fridge. Oh, yeah, it'd be a nightmare. There'll be some teething problems to begin yeah, with. I'm sure it'll sure. all get straightened out. Police interrogations. They're they're going to have issues, aren't they? Yeah. You know, they can't be. Where's the body? It's now just going to be like the body's somewhere. We we would love you to tell us where it is. <laughs> <laughs> the murderer would just be like, I'm sure you would. <laughs> Mm. They'd have to say, may you show me where the body is? <laughs> I think you mean, may I, not can I? <laughs> Definitely does change the dynamic of that. It does, in, a little bit. The derogation of it. Well, they just, they just have to like show, like they just point at the dead body on the floor. Like like when a dog does a poo in the house or something, and you just got to like point it at the dog and be like, look, look what you bad. did. Bad. Bad. Bad, you. <laughs> Pointing at a picture of a dead body. Bad. Bad. <laughs> I'm sure we could think of a better technique for an interrogation than that. Yeah, but I guess so. Good thing we're not police officers, though. <laughs> good thing. Well, there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed listening. Yep, let us know your thoughts about a world without questions. Are there any extra weird side effects that you can think of that we didn't mention? If there is, you can tweet us at Chris and Jack. That's Chris with a K. But thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.